Hello everybody and welcome to our Tech Tuesday tutorial number 32. Today we show you how to make non-linear, interactive PowerPoint presentations. Okay, so I know that PowerPoint is a bit tired. It's old. I personally use PowerPoint once or twice a year at most. I prefer the functionality, simplicity, and the collaboration aspects of Google Slides. But PowerPoint still reigns supreme in its feature set, and one feature it does have is the ability to link to specific slides within a presentation. Now, Google Slides has this too, but what it doesn't have is an ability that pairs with that, and that's the ability to shut down advancing through a presentation manually. That's right, PowerPoint can make it impossible to advance your presentation by clicking on a slide. Now, why would you want to do that? because sometimes you might want to take explicit control of where people go when they click and what they need to click on to do so. So let's see an example and show you how at the same time. So this is a simple presentation that I've put together and it's basically a slide with a couple of pictures here that allow you to maybe choose a topic and then some slides with demo text here for each of those topics. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a PowerPoint presentation where the person has to click on the picture to go to the topic and they can only click on these pictures. They can't advance the slideshow normally. So how do I do that? The first thing we need to do is disable the ability for PowerPoint to advance whenever you click. So you need to go into transitions and notice at the very top, you'll see an option to advance on mouse click. Turn that off and then say apply to all. This will apply to all of your slides and even the slides that you create from then on. Now, we don't want to turn that off on the first one because we want the first one to be able to advance to the second one where they start making their choices. So we go back to the first slide or any before the home screen, so to speak. This will be called the home screen. And you want to turn that back on for that one. So on this slide, they advance on mouse click. On the rest of these, they do not advance on mouse click. So how do you get them to advance? Well, you select an object or text uh, and you go in here and choose insert hyperlink. And when you do get this, you wanna choose place in this document, and then you choose what slide you'd like it to go to. So the cat picture will go to the cat's slide. And then this one, I'll choose insert hyperlink as well, and this will go to dogs. So if this works right, when they click on that, it should take them to the cat's one. Well, how do they get back to this? There's an option here to insert what's called action buttons. So you come over here to shapes, and choose action buttons. And you can choose one that goes back or even one that goes uh, return. Uh, return is a different icon and it can be a little confusing to people, I think. So I choose not to use that one, but it does do a wonderful thing that says hyperlink to last slide viewed, which is actually what we want. The reason when you do that is because if you did the previous slide, the dogs one would take you back to cats and we don't want it to do that. I don't like that picture, so I'm gonna go in here and insert uh, a shape, an action button, and I'll do the back one. But what I'm gonna do with this is instead of previous slide, I will choose last slide viewed. So I'll come over here and size this uh, however I want. Uh, let's put it right there, that sounds good. Now if I want this one on the dogs one, I should just select it, control C to copy it, go to the dogs, control V without clicking on the slide, and it'll place it in the same location as the previous slide. That way I maintain a certain consistency in the way that they are shaped, sized or placed and so on. Great, so let's test this out, see what it looks like, right? All right, so let's start from the beginning. Here it is, we advance. We cannot advance by clicking. So we can then click on this cat, it takes us to cats, hit back, choose the dog, takes us back to dogs, cheese takes us back to cheese, and then end takes us to the end of the slot show. So you may be thinking, that's a nice trick, but what are some other things I can do with it? One thing you can do is make nonlinear stories, sort of like choose your own adventure books or goosebumps. This one involves a little kid finding a turtle and what happens when he makes certain decisions. So we'll start this one. And in the story, he sees a little turtle crossing the road, almost gets hit by a car. What does he do? Save the turtle or keep walking? So let's say he keeps walking. Well, as he keeps going, well, he's out of the story at this point and the turtle is now the main character. So we switched and what does the turtle do? Cross the road, continue on his grand adventure and so on. If I wanted to, I could go back and make a different decision or even all the way back to the beginning and choose to save the turtle at that point and keep it as a pet and go to the pet store and get food for it and so on and so forth. So this allows us to have multiple endings. This allows us to explore all different types of uh, consequences for our choices and just makes it an overall more interesting story 
especially from the writing standpoint. This is another example of an interactive PowerPoint, only this time, instead of being less of a story, it's more of a simulation. And in this case, this material was adapted from hungerbanquet.org, which is now Oxfam America. I wasn't able to find it online again, but I'm sure it's there somewhere. Anyways, this information was originally in a website and I put it into a PowerPoint. So you take the role of a coffee grower, and in this simulation, each slide tells you kind of how, you're, how well you're doing, how you're eating, and what's going on. As you continue on, you'll eventually have to make a decision. So you can either join a co-op or listen to your wife and keep your independence. As you go on, you see that there are consequences for your choices and sometimes it can be really tough. But this helps teach you the real world situations that coffee growers have to go through and then invites you to take action. The final example is a Jeopardy template. So this is actually more of a game and the way it works is basically the home screen is really this Jeopardy board. And each of these is a link to a slide that has a question and answer. And there's instructions here on how to replace this so that you can replace all instances of the word category or phrase category one with whatever you'd like, like cats or something. So I can come in here and use the find replace command to replace category one with cats. Replace all. And it should replace seven. But as you go in here, you now see that that's now cats. And so I can put in the prompt there and the prompt might be this website made lol cats famous. And the question would be, uh, what is I can has cheeseburger. So when you want to run this, you just go in here and start it up. And um, when they click on it, it shows the current question and nothing happens if you click at all it doesn't advance doesn't do anything until you click get the answer and then it'll display it then you can click this to go back to the scoreboard you can score and then you can continue on to the next question and then you click get answer again you go back here and apply the score if you need to and it remembers all that. But this is all using the same basic thing, which is um, linking to a slide and linking back to the main slide and not allowing advancement throughout the presentation. Okay, I hope you all enjoyed that video. I hope you found it useful and learned a few things about PowerPoint that you didn't know. And if you did like it, go ahead and uh, click that like button. Heck, why not support us and click that subscribe button. Share this video with your friends, leave comments in the bottom, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.